Hi friends, it's Bess here from Life with Bess and welcome to the pattern tutorial for August Pattern Club Design. The first thing we are going to do is prepare our fabric and hoop ready for stitching. We're going to be using two colors of fabric for this project. So if you're unsure on how to do this step, I have a separate YouTube tutorial on my embroidery basics playlist here on YouTube. So you can check that out. You just want to make sure that your fabric is nice and tight. Now the pink fabric is going to be for the base of the design and the beige will be what our stump working pieces will be on. So first of all, you're going to transfer the base design onto the pink fabric so this has the hand with the jumper and then just the outline of where the daisy will be I am using a friction pen and my iPad as a light box once you have done that first step you're going to repeat that again with the second design and this has all of those little pieces that will be stitched separately with the wire and then cut out and glued to be attached to that base piece to create a really fun 3d effect for this piece once you have transferred the two designs, I would recommend taking the base design and flipping it around the other way so that the fabric is at the front and then you are ready to stitch. The first thing that we're going to do is grab our watercolors. So this is my Koi watercolors from Secura and I absolutely love the wide range of colors. I'm going to be using that medium brown. You're going to also need some round brushes, some water, and then also a paper towel is really handy. I also like to make sure that stuff dries really fast. So I'm going to be using a hairdryer with the cool setting. Now, any element in this piece is totally customizable. Whatever inspires you, you can swap out the skin color or the jumper color or even the petals on the flower. It is totally just what inspires you. So whatever color you're gonna do, you're just gonna lay uh, a loose layer of watercolor down just to get the color onto your fabric. And you're just gonna be really careful that your fabric doesn't get too saturated and every now and again, stuffing and letting it dry because you don't want that color to seep and run over the edges of where you want it to be. Make sure you really do use the cool setting on your hairdryer, otherwise the friction pen lines will disappear. Once you have added the base color and you've got a lot of the color down, we're going to go in with a much thicker paste of the watercolor so it doesn't actually saturate the fabric as much so you can get a lot more detail and get those really clean line edges. Once the edges are done, you'll probably notice that there is a color gradient difference. So you're just going to go in with a slightly wet brush and just help blend it across so it is one color across the whole section that you're doing watercolor for. At this point, you can totally stop and get ready to start stitching, but I always like to add a little bit of shading and detailing with the watercolor just because it adds a little bit of depth. So I'm gonna come in with that more thicker watercolor paste that I've got, and I'm gonna be adding a shadow in where her, the palm of her hand is, where her fingers are curled around the petal, and I just work and I just make sure I don't add that darker color over the top of the fingers. So so just have a play with it if you are comfortable adding shadows and light then go for it I also added a little bit of detail on where her knuckles are on her fingers as well and this is what it looks like once I finish my watercolor it is a bit hard to see the friction pen line so I like to go back over with my friction pen to make stitching really easy Now it is time to stitch the outline of the hand. So I'm gonna be using a single strand of a matching brown color thread. Again here, if you picked a different color for the hand, just match it with a thread as best you can. I'm using split stitch for this because I wanted a really nice smooth line and the single strand just makes it delicate and detailed. Don't worry about stitching the nails, we're gonna do them next. So for her nails, I wanted her to have some nail polish that is the same color as her jumper. Using satin stitch, we're just gonna fill in all of her nail shapes. I recommend starting from the bed of her nail like I do here and stitch over to the bottom of the nail and make that stitch go over the top of the outline. Just repeat this for all five of her nails. Obviously her thumb is at a slight angle, but you're still gonna keep your stitches all going in the same direction as if it's in the same direction as nail growth. If you wanna have completely natural nails for your hand, then that's totally fine. Just stitch the outline using the brown thread like we did before. 
Now, once this is done, we're just gonna add a little bit of an outline along the top of her nail. We're doing this afterwards so that it helps stand out against the nail polish. So we're just gonna use a single strand of our brown thread exactly like we did for the hand outline and do split stitch and just get that slightly curved shape. So you can see the difference that it makes. It just really helps it stand out and solidifies it in the design. Next we are moving on to the jumper. This is going to be a knit jumper so we're going to be using the trusty chain stitch to get the knitted effect. So we're going to start at the top of her wrist and do a chain stitch down to the edge of the hoop. And then once you've completed that first row, like I, you can see that I've done there, we're going to move back up to the top near her wrist and complete the second row. So we want all of the chain stitch rows going in the same direction. You can see that I've got some lines there that are gonna help guide the distance between each of these rows. And then what I did, cause there's a little bit of a gap in between, I just came with a straight stitch and did a straight stitch in between each of those chain stitch rows and it just really brings it in together and makes a really nice dense knitted finish the last thing that we're going to do here is just kind of gently tweak those chain stitches just to help them pop out a little bit from behind those straight stitches Next, we are going to be stitching the stem. So I created the stem by using couching and padded satin stitch. So first of all, you're just gonna couch six strands of the green thread into place, just getting that slight curve. And don't forget that there is some stem in between her fingers, so don't forget to add them in there. So the main two section we'll be couching is below her hand and above her hand. So if you haven't done couching before, it's basically just doing a straight stitch, and then you're gonna come back in and do some securing stitches just to get that straight stitch to go in the position that you want. Once it is all couched into place we're going to satin stitch over the top of the couching. So this creates a padded satin stitch. It's a really cool way to create a slightly elevated texture 3D effect to the stem because we're going to have the stump work for the leaves and the petals. We really want that stem to just lift off the the hoop a little bit more so that it doesn't seem flat and too 2D against all the 3D elements. It is a lot of little stitches, but it is totally worth it. The final bit of stitching we're gonna be doing on the base hoop is for the center of the daisy. I'm gonna be using turkey stitch to fill this whole entire space and then I'm gonna trim it down to make a really fluffy, slightly domed center. This is gonna be the jumping platform for which all of those petals attach in. So I really wanted some fun texture and something exciting that they would stand out nicely against. I started in the center of the center and did a couple of those turkey stitches in close together until I felt like it was full and then I made my way around the outside doing turkey stitch just really making sure that I fill in that space give yourself plenty of length with your loops it doesn't really matter how long they are because we're going to trim them off anyway once you are happy with how full it is it is time to get in there with your scissors it is a little bit nerve-wracking but just go slowly start by trimming all the loops and then go in and start to trim closer and closer to the hoop just keep working on it until you get a shape that you are happy with there will be lots of fluff everywhere so don't forget to clean it up and it should look something like this when you finish We're gonna now move on to our second hoop that we prepared and do the stump work pieces. So I'm gonna be using some 26 gauge gold designer wire. This is gonna form a basis for each of the shapes that I'll be stitching. Starting off with the two leaves, I recommend starting at the tip, the point of the leaf and secure that down with couching stitch. So we're just going to bend the wire and secure it in place. It's really important to use the wire because it allows you to be flexible with where you want your finished pieces to sit. So I just make my way around couching it all in place. We're again gonna stitch over the top of this with normal embroidery thread. So you won't see any of this at all. Once you get to the bottom of the leaf that you're doing, just do a stitch across both of those pieces of wire just to make sure that they are connected nice and securely. It is a little bit time consuming but it is totally worth 
worth it for the end result. So you're gonna wanna do this for the two leaves that we have here and then also for the 12 petals as well. Make sure that you keep plenty of length in the tails for these because we're gonna need them to attach them into the hoop. Now that all the outlines are finished, it is time to start stitching. So we're gonna be using three strands of the green thread and just filling the space with long and short stitch. The thing you gotta really watch for is that you're going to make sure that it covers over the outside of the wire. So you're not stitching inside the outline of the wire, you're making sure that your thread goes over the top of the wire and onto the other side. So it covers the wire completely and this will form a really good basis. So we're gonna do those two leaves, just using long and short stitch. I did alternate my stitches on the way down the leaf, so it does look a little bit like basic leaf stitch as well. Once the leaves are done, we're just gonna fold up those tails so that they're out of the way, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing for the petals. The number one tip that I do have for you when doing this though, you can see how I started my thread with the knot in the middle of the petal. This is really important as it means that you won't have any knots on the outside edge of your petal. When it comes time to cutting it out and gluing the edges, it makes it a lot easier if you're not gonna accidentally chop off the knot and then your thread might come loose. So I'm using a long and short stitch here as well, doing the same trick of coming over the wire into the center of the petal to make sure that wire is completely covered. Just keep repeating this for all of the petals and then you're ready for the next step. Once all of the stitching of the stump work pieces is done, your hoop should look a little bit like this. Time to prep the pieces to be attached into the base hoop. It is really nerve wracking again, but we're just gonna start by chopping around very loosely each of the petals and the leaves. And this is just our starting point. And then we're gonna go in and cut with a lot more detail around trying to get as much of the fabric off as possible. So I found it easier to kind of bend the wire out of the way, do a loose chop around the fabric, and then go in with a lot more detail, trying to get it as many strands of the fabric from the backing without actually cutting any of the embroidery threads. There might be some little stray pieces here or there, but that's totally okay. We're gonna fix that up with some fabric glue in a minute. I wish it was this fast, but it wasn't. This is the fabric glue that I'm using, but you can use any type of fabric glue. I found it easy just to get a little bit of the glue on my finger, just kind of dab it around the outside edge, and then kind of sweep all those loose bits towards the back. So that makes a really nice clean edge on all of your pieces. I'll show you a comparison here in a second. It just takes away those little furry edges and makes a nice clean finish. Once all your pieces have been cut and prepped, it is time to start attaching them into the base hoop. So we're gonna start with the leaves. Start by trimming off those tails of the wire to about two or three centimeters. And then we're just gonna bend at a 90 degree angle right at the base of the leaf. Grab a larger needle, it needs to have a larger eye, and we're just gonna feed it through and just twist it to create a hole in the fabric so that we can pop those two ends of the wire through the fabric to the back without it getting stuck just fiddle with this and you'll find the right balance in the right position once we've fed that through you'll see that the wire is just sticking out at the back there we're going to hold the leaf in place at the front with our fingers and then bend that wire flat against where that stem is and using some thread just kind of catch it into place and secure it using just some stitches here we're going to do this for all of the, the ones that we're going to attach so the back is going to get pretty busy here in a minute. Once you are happy with how secure it is, just tweak it to be at the angle and position that you're after. Repeat this with a second leaf on the other side of the stem, and then your leaves are done, and we're gonna move on to attaching the petals. Now you would have noticed in the pattern outline that there were some line markings around the center of the flower. These are gonna act as a guide for where our petals are gonna go. To start with, we're gonna put one petal at each quarter. So we're gonna do a petal at 12, three, six, and nine, if you're thinking of a clock face. And these are gonna act as a guide and we'll fill in the other petals in between. And so just like we did with the leaves, we're gonna attach those wires at the back to the stem or to the center. 
The number one thing that I would note here is to make sure that your petal is attaching into the fabric right at the base of where the flower center is so that they really disappear and the fluff of that flower center is actually covering where the petals are being attached into the fabric. This is what I meant by the back will get a little bit messy. If you're worried about this step, you could just do two layers of fabric at the back and just secure it into the backing layer rather than the top layer. Once you have finished adding all of the petals, just tweak that center and tweak the petals until you are happy with it and you are finished just remove those friction pen markings thank you so much for joining me in this pattern tutorial I hope you guys found it helpful if you want to stitch this design you can find the PDF on my website lifewithbess.com hope you guys had fun happy stitching